What's up, Rockstars? We've got a lot to discuss in today's video. There is a plethora of games that are available, the games that are coming up, new announcements of some games, and a lot of news to go over. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate the videos I make every single week for you and you can't give even a dollar a month, there is a link down below to that. Again, thank you so much. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. This is going to be a lot. Now, fair warning right now, I am getting a little sick. I have like the urge to sneeze like constantly and I, I actually have to kind of breathe through my mouth a little bit. So apologies if I look a little dumb, if I sound a little dumb. It, I, it, there's nothing to, to do about it except, I guess, power on through. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to power on through. Starting things out with Oko Chronicles Cycle of Earth. I have an unboxing for this. I have a review for this. That is all uh, linked down below, along with everything else that I'm showing, of course. Um, this is actually kind of fun because Oka Chronicles is a fantastic game. It's definitely one of my top hidden gems. And uh, I, I can't believe more people aren't enjoying Oka Chronicles. It's very, very nice. This is an interesting spin on it. They do this with a lot of the expansions. So this one is a standalone expansion. Kind of a tower defense thing. You can still do one versus many, or you can do full co-op. Uh, you can do solo. It, it supports even just one player with an automated uh, enemy, just like the co-op. Uh, so that works really well. Um, it, there's just a lot of fun to be had. Now, I wasn't able to try all the scenarios, but the fact that they have 10 of them sounds awesome. So they also have like whatever this guy's going to be. The minis are always great. They paint up beautifully. Very high quality product. There's a lot of just good stuff in here. So if you're interested at all, and honestly, I mean, it's less than a hundred bucks for the uh, for the pledge. So I'm in on that. And uh, that, sometimes I put my money where my mouth is. So uh, there you go. They're unlocking this new, uh, I think, hero, it looks like, soon. Uh, very, very cool. Very interested to see who that is and what's going on there. They have the rule book. They have gameplay videos. They don't have my unboxing or my review. But if anything, the Red Joker is not good at its campaigns, which is maybe why they don't do so good. But um, Or at least they're, they're not the heavy hitter that they could be with the quality of game that they have. Um, but they do a great job and uh, when it comes to the actual product. At the end of the day, I think that's what matters the most. So that's that. Moving on up to one's done much better. This is Tidal Blades 2 Rise of the Unfolders plus the RPG system they have for that. This is by Druid City Games, and it's the first time, first campaign Druid City Games is doing on their own after leaving Skybound. So if you didn't know, they have left Skybound. I don't know. I would like to think it's probably, well, I wouldn't like to think. I, I suspect it's probably has to do with the whole Bloodstone thing, right? Kind of an Eric Lang, True Vong Legends sort of, you know, deal. Makes sense. Understandable. Either way, they're on their own, and they're already doing good. Half a million dollars already. 4,000 backers. Still 14 days to go. And then, of course, a, a probably a healthy pledge manager, too. So they're doing quite well, and I'm really happy for them there. One of the nice things that you guys might be interested in, if you don't know what Tidal Blades is, you can go look. They have a ton of information here, as you can see. Um, there's been a few things I like, um, you know, just besides having a quality product and using way too much blue. Um, and first of all, as you can see, standees, right? Uh, we'll get to that. Um, but they also have this miniature set, 70 minis, no repeats that I can tell. Uh, well, no, I guess there are repeats, but... It, Either way, 70 minis for 70 bucks. So it's a dollar a mini uh, just from the get-go. And they do have a lot of like really nice like hero sculpts. And they kind of remind me of Cobra Mode, the uh, STL uh, patron uh, that you can join. Uh, the bosses look great. It just, there's a lot of fun stuff there. Yeah, there are some repeats on the little guys. Um, but a lot of oversized bosses. I don't know what scale oversized bosses. It doesn't look that much bigger. Um, it looks like maybe three bases though, so maybe it is bigger and it's just not scaled well here because, um, yeah, you can get the, the Strangler Queen or the Karakine, you know, whatever. You can see them here. Very cool minis, very unique, and a lot of them. 
They also have the rule book here and then they have these videos coming up and it'll actually say, some will just say coming soon and then others will give a date like April 2nd, April 4th, April 7th here. And that, I think that's really cool to kind of um, have stuff that people can keep looking at, keep uh, going over, which is very cool, I think. So uh, yeah, that is obviously still has what, two weeks left to go on that. Next up we have Malia, A Lands of Legends, six days ago. So this is the last week for it, 3,197. So day nine of 16 here, 426,000, almost at 500,000 themselves. So they're doing quite good there. I do not have a review out here yet. It's just a matter of catching up. I have Anastir now as well. So, you know, it's just, just a matter of finding time. It's a, it's a heftier thing. I was able to get Oko done just because I've played Oko Chronicles before too. So I could just pick it up and get going on it. This one is going to take a little bit more effort, but uh, yeah, I'll still let you guys know my thoughts. And it looks like I got six days to do it. They are busy also just, you know, unlocking stuff. I think the next unlock is a hero that they have. Uh, if we kind of scroll down, we'll be able to see uh, their, their unlocks, which there's, there's plenty of, like they're, they're doing a lot there. And it looks like they have a lot of cool, you know, dice and gems and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's gonna be a new hero coming out. It looks like maybe a thief. It would be my assumption there. I think that's what people are talking about. They have a few add-ons that they've had since like day one. So nothing big there. Pretty much what you see is what you get, which is kind of nice. Next up, we have Tamashi Chronicle of Ascend, 618,000. Again, we have a whole bunch of like right at the, you know, half a million mark thereabouts. Uh, and this one is uh, also unlocking some really, really cool stuff. Um, uh, that being said, just scrolling through this, if you don't like pink and purple, don't back this game. <laughs> That's like all it is. Um, I did find this kind of interesting. So first of all, that cat is adorable, uh, very cute cat. And I love these tokens and stuff like that. They look very nice. Um, but you know, normally their art is pretty on par with what you're going to get, but both of these are impossible, right? You got like a, a floating disc thing here that just doesn't really work. I, they could probably attach it to the base, but as it is right now, it's kind of not being silly. And then of course the puppet master has these strings that like, you're not going to get little tiny plastic strings. So I don't know. I, it, it's just kind of odd. It's like, I, I would think their artists would still kind of like understand miniatures and, and how they work and kind of design something that can actually work in a miniature instead of drawing art that can't work. And even stuff like this, like this has like a really skinny leg here. And so that I would think would need to be fattened up, especially at the connection point here. Like that, that's a very weak connection there on both the legs. So uh, it's just kind of odd, but there are minis like when they end up there, they end up really cool anyway. This one, by the way, very cool. Um, this one's like 60 bucks or something like that. And of course, or not 60 bucks, sorry, uh, 60 millimeters. And uh, it looks adorable too. So there's that as well. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's a lot here now at this point. A lot. They've unlocked a lot, uh, they, and they keep going. They're and they're and they're going strong. So there's a lot to, to. If this, if you were interested in this, there's there's a ton here for you. That's a great looking mini. Um, so yeah, very very cool. Design wise, you have minis that are like sitting and stuff like that. You don't get a lot of those. So very unique style aesthetic and uh, sculpt design for this uh, for this game. So it, it's up to you on like how much you're willing to spend on it. I mean, the, the Core 72, that's I think pretty great. If you do the Cyber Pledge, it's, uh, you know, it's getting close to like 120 bucks, which in today's market is actually kind of cheap. So there is that. All right, let's move on to stuff that's coming out. First of all, my biggest one I'm excited about. All right, this is DC deck building game 10th anniversary that they're doing. This is from Cryptozoic Entertainment. They've been doing this apparently for 10 years now, and they have a deck building rivals for the Flash and Reverse Flash, and they have Injustice. Injustice is the one I'm super excited about. They said there will be some Kickstarter exclusive stuff, especially in Injustice, and I love Injustice. These are great comics. It's a great video game series. It all run great. Everything Injustice is fantastic. Actually, the animated movie didn't look super great so i didn't even watch it but i've read enough of the comics i've played both games i don't need the animated movie anyway what i do need is a card game with them for sure 100 percent. let's do it uh that sounds fun um i don't know how they're going to do that when it comes to strength i like the whole point of injustice is they get like these pills that essentially make them all like as strong as Superman. Uh, and that gives you fun stuff like Alfred punching uh, like and headbutting uh, Superman and breaking his nose. And so, you know, Superman's all like bloody nose or whatever. And Alfred's just like standing over him saying he's disappointed. Fantastic stuff. Again, the comics are great. Um, but <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Nerded out a little bit. I'm excited about this. I'll definitely be on this. There's, I've already clicked the remind me button. Uh, this is just a given. I, I, I love the IP. I love card games. I've been meaning to get into this. I don't really have much excuse now, especially with Injustice. One of my favorite ones because it's just fun. It's silly. It's a what if. They can kill off anybody at any time in ridiculous ways. It's a blast. I love it. So very excited for that. And the Flash is awesome too. Fastest Man Alive. Excited to see him go against Reverse Flash and see what this all has to do. Either way, like it, I'm, I'm excited like by a ton. So very, very cool. We also have Horror Game Show, the board game. Now... If you didn't know, my wife and I are really into horror movies. Actually, we 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 love the the theme and the style and uh, the classics and and even the new ones and stuff like that. Like um, last one I saw, I guess was the latest Scream. I actually really enjoyed it. It was quite fun. It's a fun movie. It's kind of like a whodunit, like all the others, which I think gives it a nice um, uh, not not flavor, but a, a nice feeling. So uh, yeah. Recommended there. Uh, it's, it's a fun one there. Not really scary, but you know, whatever. Either way, this is kind of interesting because it's meta like that. Just like how Scream is like, oh, hey, there's like horror movies. Let's talk about horror movies. This is, you're actually playing essentially a producer making a movie and you're trying to make the best horror movie you can. It's called the Horror Game Show. Kind of interesting. There's some more information here where you can actually kind of really read about it and see what's going on here. Two to four players. 120, 160 minutes, and about 16 plus for probably obvious reasons. Looks like they do have minis. They have impossible renders, of course. Like you can't have these tiny little, um, you know, syringe hooks here. This is too skinny here. Uh, you can't have the in between hollow points on the. Um, on the purse like this, obviously his head would have to be assembled this way. And even that texture is pretty hardcore, so I wouldn't necessarily buy that. So like, and, and then like even their feet, right? Like he has to tread underneath his feet um, where it's flat. I mean, you can do it, but I mean, it, at this point, the minis are getting kind of expensive. So they're... The renders, right? So just be on the on the lookout for that. Anytime you see renders, those are not actual miniatures, and uh, some people make them better than others when it comes to what the final product will be. But as you see, there's a ton here that you can kind of look over and get some information on. So I'll link to this as well. Most of these are going to be 22 characters, man, your own studio and staff. I mean, it, it it it's not what you would think when it comes to a horror game, but kind of interesting. I still dig it. I like that it's it's unique. It looks kind of retro with the, the TV like this. This is like my first TV, I remember. I didn't even, I had the little knob. I didn't even have a remote. <laughs> All right, next up we have Avalonia. This is coming up soon. I already have an unboxing. I will have a review. I've read the rule book. It looks like I'll be able to get some game time in very soon on it. But again, there's there's Malia and there's Anastir as well. But uh, working on this for sure to get it for you. Another unique thing, post-apocalyptic Mad Max King Arthur mixed all together into some like weird um like pure blood situation stuff they're, they're, it's wild so very unique style um and uh yeah i'll let you know my thoughts when when i get to it um there is by the way uh go ahead and again there's a link down below to this you can get oh come on load up um a uh, resin miniature you can win uh just by like signing up and doing some stuff here so i'll link to this down below you can take a look over this this is on backer kit here they, they just essentially want your email but you don't have to if you just want to be reminded they have this available if you want to give them your email which is a little bit more of an effort on your part while well, they're giving away some resin minis so there's that as well all right next up we have icon I icono clash this is um uh, essentially you know a uh, well, I mean, it, it it's it's pretty obvious once you see it. Let me let me get a good picture. No, oh, I can't get a good picture at all. They're all just the people. Nobody cares about that. It's essentially Super Smash Brothers. Um, so you can see here, there you go. It's from Level 99 Games. It's coming out March 29th. So very soon here, you can kind of see how you have this. But it's all card based, right? Level 99 does a lot of different, uh, you know, characters from from silly right and cute to you know like really cool and you know bad butt and all this kind of stuff um you know some get more anime than others uh but like like this little guy i like his his little his little body up there anyway uh yeah definitely interested in that just from the theme and again love card games so i'll be on the lookout for that on the 29th Next up, we have Chronicles of Durangar, Age of Darkness Apocalypse. If you didn't know, you're probably either getting money or paying less if you're involved in this at all. So what gives? What's going on? Well, first, they have a 30-minute uh, interview with the guy from GameQuest, the CEO there. He, they, they, they do shipping. It's what they do is, is shipping stuff. But the most important thing is actually this four-and-a-half, five-minute, a little bit less than five-minute video with Rick here saying that essentially, you know what? 
we don't know why you're seeing this, right? Like well, we we went over the data and all the data points are right, but it, it's combining it weird, whatever. It doesn't matter because the point is that that it, it, it's goofy on our end. And so what they've decided to do is essentially, if you have already paid for shipping, you'll probably get a um, a refund of a certain amount, essentially the difference. They're lowering the bundle cost to match the per item cost. Uh, so that that should match now. Um, and, and and if they have to pay more, they'll just take the hit as a company. Uh, but but they're, they're trying to do this right. And so I really respect that. It sucks that it took so long to get to this point. It really does. Um, I you know Ideally, we would have had better testing and stuff like that. But it is what it is. Either way, um, if you haven't if, if you haven't pledged or paid for the shipping yet, you can go ahead and do so now. It's at a lower price now. If you uh, already did, you should get some money. Either way, it's money less uh, spent, which is awesome. So some people are grabbing like a $16 expansion or something like that or, or, or you know, whatever it might be. I don't think they really mentioned how exactly you'll get the money back per se. If you don't, if you are overcharged, um, hopefully they can share that tomorrow because they're making, or I guess today at the time you're seeing this, because they're making updates like daily on this. Like they're pumping out the updates, really trying to uh, up the communication, which I appreciate because there are, uh, there's another one we're going to cover soon that doesn't even do that. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay. So this is interesting. Grand Archive is canceling plans for NFTs. Now, a couple things here, a couple things here. Um, first of all, I agree with this. I think the whole NFT thing was dumb. I do not like that card games are getting popular because they're focused on rarity. I'm not enjoying that. I'm not happy about that. I want a, a card game to be a card game and not focus on all of this. Well, a, a, as you saw before, there, there's some issues with that, right? So um, that's cool. That being said, the people that are here, a lot of the people invested because they wanted the NFTs. So it is kind of weird to like advertise it and then take it away. Um, I, I don't think it's malicious or anything like that, um, it, but it is kind of odd, right? Ideally, they just wouldn't have done it to begin with. But either way, canceling NFTs, um, which I think most people are probably still happy with. All right, now this is another one. This is Sorcery Contested Realms TCG. It's at $2.4 million from 3,868 backers and still 10 days to go. Why is this so big? First of all, the art is very pretty. Second of all, it's actually brought by some kind of big names. And secondly, it's all about investments. I don't know how many players there are, but there's certainly, I think, more investors and players at this point. In fact, that's what some comments have even said. So what's going on? Why, why are these card games making so much? So if you didn't know, if you don't know who Rudy is, and I think there's another person that he got as well, but he is from Alpha Investments, it has investments in there, and he talks about selling magic cards, really, right? That's how, that's his business. That's what he does is he buys thousands of dollars worth of product and then waits until they, you know, quadruple in price and then sells them at like inflated prices or figures out, you know, what the rare cards is and opens them up and sells just those and sells the bulk. And his business is actually just selling rares and mythics and stuff like that. Like that's what he does. He's very good at it. He's actually kind of a cool guy, uh, sort of. Um, he's, he's a little wild, <laughs> um, but but I, I see that as a term in endearment. Uh, however, they got him to do a video on this and he was excited about this. They've, they've, uh, they've been asked about rarity and they were kind of cagey about how rare things will be. There are some cool, interesting things in this game. I'm not saying that, but the reason these things get so big, if you notice with the NFTs and stuff like this, or the, or the likeness to Pokemon, which has a big craze going on for expensive cards, or getting an, an literally a, a guy who runs Alpha Investments to talk about investing in this game, and then suddenly you jump up by a million bucks, well, that's because there are people buying it, hoping it becomes big. In other words, the idea is that you you buy a couple grand in here you have some expendable income considered an investment almost as you know maybe it's like putting them into stock or something right so you buy a couple grand worth of this game and then if it becomes popular it's great like they already they always talk all these games talk about how this is the alpha alpha investments alpha um release and that these kickstarter even if you know that it becomes a great thing and they release it there will never be these kickstarter ones again and not in this one they'll have a black border versus a white border some junk like that to make it special so that they're worth more because there's a finite amount of them so that if sorcery contested realm tcg becomes as big as magic or be as big as pokemon or even you 
Yu-Gi-Oh or something like that, then suddenly you have cards worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And if you have all those alpha packs that you bought, then suddenly your thousand dollar investment's now worth 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, whatever, right? The problem is that investors don't create a user base and without a user base, they go nowhere. So for the most part, these launch, they make millions of dollars from people who just have the money to spend and you know they can spend their money however they want i don't care um and then it kind of goes nowhere they just peter out and die off so um yeah i mean it'd be nice if this becomes a thing just because i think it's great to have more card games and more people playing in that space and more competition for stuff like wizards of the coast i think that's awesome however it is unfortunate that all i see every single time at moment it makes over a million is people start investing and and that's not like the 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 backers you need. You need backers that are interested in playing the game and enough of them to be able to play the game to where there's actually a live community that is, you know, thriving and growing, not just a whole bunch of people sitting on thousands of dollars worth of booster boxes and wrap so that they can sell them on eBay later if it becomes popular. So um, that, that's my two cents there. Be cautious whenever you see a card game worth over a million dollars in Kickstarter, because right? as far as I can tell, every single one of them, a lot of the driving force is based off of card worth and and reselling and um you know it, it like we do that with miniature board games and all that stuff but uh it typically it's like a, oh i'll buy two and i'll flip the second one to pay for the first one something like that there's not a whole lot of people where or a whole lot of campaigns where they're like everybody's just buying out the stock and it's making all these millions and nobody plans on playing the game just selling it right um he, he, like you have to sell it to people who want to play the game so either way it's it's uh, I, I get it and made them some money, but I don't think in the long term stuff like that actually helps. So my two cents on that. All right, next up we have Cthulhu Island. This was actually canceled. They will be back supposedly. There was some issues, especially with the pricing. When they people complained about how expensive it was, they just took stuff away and lowered the pricing, which doesn't actually help the situation at all. And um, yeah, there's a lot of like silliness there. They I did notice from the earlier things where they kind of like pretty much took a lot of the sculpts. Uh, I, I like almost a, a, a one to one, but worse version from stuff like Cthulhu Death May Die and stuff like that. They've redone it now. And so like their Haster is different, stuff like that. So I do appreciate the fact that they that they didn't end up copying it too much. Um, but uh, there, there's still some missteps. Like I've already reported on like, you know, how they, they just make a ton of games, like a ton. They, they're like they they're they're going at such a fast pace they're going to put peterson games to shame eventually if they keep going uh, at the rate they're doing with their sister companies and all this other kind of stuff which as far as i can tell pretty much has the same employees but whatever and is the same owner anyway um one thing i thought that was an issue and this is something i want to point out and I'll, you'll see this again here soon this person here who's a super bagger right so they do this a lot we're talking about exactly this right they were saying hey i have concern about the the um, CEO having essentially all these other sister campaigns that, you know, release their stuff, you know, to like get around rules and stuff like that. Right. The, and and they respond almost how they should. They respond by saying, you know, hey, you know, yeah, this this, you know, in other words, explaining right and giving information. That's great. Right. Um, the, the issue is. Um, they say we respect constructive and informative feedback, but this is neither, um, not a, oh, hey, you must have thought this here. Let me clarify. Like, in other words, they're kind of antagonistic. Well, I guess they're very defensive, which I think tells a lot anyway, but they even said uh, that they were actually going to forward the comment to Kickstarter and flag out a spam. In other words, they wanted this comment gone. And that's really unfortunate. That's not how you engage with customers, especially customers with concerns, especially if you don't feel that they are, um, valid. Uh, you, you know, I, I think it's important to clear up things that are an issue, right? That's why I do dis disclaimers and stuff like that. So it's like, Hey, if there's any questions, like, let's talk about it. Right. You know, uh, as, as opposed to j just d not only dismissing them, but, but actively trying to get, uh, the comment removed from your campaign. Uh, but they ended up canceling it pretty soon after anyway. So it's, it's whatever, literally the same day, like they responded with this and then they are like, uh, oh, actually we're just going to cancel. So uh, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's odd, but they have several games that still need to be delivered and they're, they're busy, you know, putting more out there. In fact, uh, they're, they're, hold on, wait, uh, I forgot about this. So, um, when they canceled, they're like, oh, but don't worry, we'll replace this campaign with this other one real quick. So this wasn't going to go on Kickstarter, but now they're going to throw it on Kickstarter because they got to have stuff on Kickstarter apparently. So, um, yeah, they're just going to, I guess, spam with this Dracula thing instead, whatever. Okay. This is interesting. 
Newly funded POW Interactive acquires Jasco Games. They paid $20 million for Jasco Games. If you didn't know Jasco, they did the Mega Man. They did um, a lot of the uh, card games, like the Street Fighter card game. They did the Street Fighter miniatures game. They're going to be doing the Mortal Kombat miniatures game. They were going to be doing the Dragon Ball Z miniatures game, all with Angry Joe from the Angry Joe show. And, uh, you know, I, the, the, the DBZ thing kind of fell through. But either way, uh, that, you know, not too bad, but 20 million bucks they were bought. This Power Interactive um, is, is it, it, it's essentially an investment firm, right? It's, it's, a, it's an interactive holdings corporation. Like it, it's very much business, right? However, they're not wearing business suits. Um, and so uh, I actually wanted to kind of talk about this because, you know, I'm pretty much anti-suits, right? I, I feel like their business is money, not games. And they will be working on making money, not games. And the focus matters. That's why I have to make games, not campaigns, right? Because if your focus is the campaigns, right? If, if you're doing this stuff where it's like, you can't not have a campaign, you gotta have a camp, like you're making campaigns and then delivering games afterwards, as opposed to making games and then selling it through a campaign, right? It, it's like, it's where, where's your mindset at? Where, where Where's your head at, right? Suits know how to make money. That's what they do. That's their business. That's why they can go from industry to industry and still work because they're good at running businesses. They're good at, you know, finding ways to, you know, uh, gain, you know, market capital and market share and all this other kind of finance stuff that I don't care about. Right. Like, that's the thing. Well, go ahead and let's let's actually read a little bit of this. So it says here. The Power Interactive founders emphasize their background as gamers and in consulting firms, investment companies, and gaming companies, arguing that recent game industry success have produced a worrying trend where this growth has attracted executives and investors who do not always fully appreciate the intricacies of fandom. Okay. The pair wrote in a blog post, Nowadays, criticism of loot boxes, pay-to-win, and cash grab plague our industry. Stuff like Borderlands, right? Like, we see this a lot where it's, like, just shotgunned out there with even regurgitated, like, components. The... Um, the, they plan to build an entertainment group run on long-term community building rather than short-term bottom-line return. I'll allow it. Um, sounds awesome. Sounds great. Uh, so obviously anybody that's, you know, like buying stuff like this, right? Like, like Jasco, like they could have said no, right? This wasn't like some public company that's like being aggressively like stock bought out, right? Like this is like the Jasco said, yes, this is something we want to do. We'll get the 20 million in influx. We can do all this. We can do this. We can do that, right? Like we can invest here. Like I, I get it, right? And they said yes. And I imagine the attitude that uh, these two had um, which is uh, Paul and uh, Lowen. Um, I, I imagine that played a part in it. So yeah, props to them. That's awesome. It's great to see an investment from uh, where there's an influx of money, but it's from people who who honestly understand games as opposed to just money. They understand money too, but that's why they have it. Nobody who you know has money <laughs> doesn't understand it. Um, but uh, it, it's nice. It's nice. And hopefully it means a viable business, right? The last thing I want to do is back another campaign and then have the company run poorly and not run its business well and go under and not deliver or have to cut corners or delay by five years or they try to figure out how to ship it or any of that stuff. Like there needs to be some business sense there. So I'm really actually glad to see this kind of investment. I think that's great. I think that's awesome. What that includes for Jasco in the future, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'll try to find out anyway. All right. Lastly, we have Subterra 2. I showed this off in my uh, Bullets Dodged video where I was like, whew, glad I didn't back that. Um, this was kind of funny. I don't know. This could be Kickstarter automated, um, if, especially if it was just a link, but I still believe it doesn't, I don't believe Kickstarter tends to auto delete stuff. Normally, every time I've seen stuff deleted, it was actually by a request, but perhaps not. Either way, some people tried to comment <laughs> with my video and it obviously showed up, right? Like, because this person responded to it. So this showed and was then removed, right? But it linked to my video and then another link from another person to my video. And again, now they're saying, I guess Kickstarter doesn't like bad press contained in the King of Average video. Mustn't tell anyone. 
<laughs> that there is some lousy project management for companies that use the site. And so then this person was able to link it. And so, so far, so good, which again, leads me to believe that it's not an automated thing or it would have detected the same link three times now, right? It's like, and this person wouldn't have been able to respond with it. It would have just not even gone through. Um, so it looks like instead of interacting with their community or talking about issues that might come up, they're just, again, removing things. That's not how you do it. That's not how you run a community, but that is part of the course for a whole bunch of drivel for a whole year worth of not a whole lot of work. Um, so yeah, you need to hustle. Uh, you know, it's, it's just how, how it works. Um, you want to take people's money. You gotta, you gotta put in the effort, not just delete comments you don't like. I mean, that's just silly. I don't know. I'm, I'm, as you guys know, I'm pretty anti-censorship and, and, and to the point where if somebody's being an idiot, I would rather let them be an idiot and be seen publicly as one than remove it because I'm afraid that, you know, the comments mean towards me or something like that. If you're going to want to be mean towards me in the comments, it, it's going to be public. I ain't removing it. So, you know, uh, maybe people agree with you. Maybe they won't. Either way, it'll be on you. So uh, anyway, that's 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 my two cents. I, I don't think you need to be removing comments and stuff like that. It's kind of silly. So. All right, that's it. That's all I had. There's a ton of news here, obviously. Uh, you might get some money from Chronicles of Junagar. There's some stuff coming up either uh, next month or late in this month, even up to like March 29th. I think they just had to get their Kickstarter set up uh, for the Iconic Clash. That's why it was delayed is because the Kickstarter wasn't approved right away. If you didn't know, that's a manual process. Every time you see something on Kickstarter, Kickstarter had eyeballs on it and said, yes, this is good. So keep that in mind too when you see some sketchy stuff. And uh, with that, I'm going to go and let you guys go. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you guys again very, very soon. Bye guys.